Hi there guys, Ken here, you're the Thrifty Apprentice and welcome back to another Thrifty Review. In today's Thrifty Review, we are going to be unboxing, swatching, and reviewing the Paul Rubens Classical Artist Guacai Watercolor Paints. This is a 24 color tube set and I have some future plans for this if it turns out to be um, a nice set. So this says Chinese painting pigments, great unique culture art identify and some beautiful illustrated work here. It's really pretty. Uh, I've always wanted to kind of try to do Chinese brush painting. So we are going to pop these paints open. Uh, See what we have here. All right, that's gonna eliminate the shine. Okay, and this is a sleeve, it seems. So, oh, nice. Love just the straightforward simplicity of that. You guys know I can. I'm kind of partial to that type of packaging. Really nice, love it. Love the fact that it's so bold in your face. You can see it on that black background. I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. Nice. All right, we're gonna lift. That open the inside of that box is just black. It's a really nice box. So here we have a pamphlet. And it looks like it gets some swatching for the paints there. And everything is in Chinese. Really beautiful. Really beautiful. I can't really make out anything. Everything is in Chinese. Um, yeah. So. But we do know Paul Rubens is produced by Aon Arts, which produces um, Paul Rubens, pretty excellent, Owens Art, watercolors, all beautiful tubes. Let's see what we have here. We have straightforward, which seems to be maybe aluminum tubes. They're 12 milliliters a piece. All of the information on them seems to be in Chinese. Um, yeah, it says AON Arts Materials, of course. And then there are some stars on here. It says 12 milliliters. And I'm probably gonna have to try to do some translating um, as I do research on these before us to get to the review section. But I guess we can look at the fact that there's a screw on top. It screws off pretty easily there. There's no foil covering the neck of it. So pretty straightforward too. We'll get to see how the consistency of these are in just a moment. So I'm going to be panning these up in this little 24 half pan palette I ordered off of Amazon. Um, I had, oh, that was a 13 free pieces. I had, some extra half pans down the middle and I couldn't remember where they came from. And then I remembered there was 13 free um, half pans that came in the set along with this 24 that were already in the tin. So I'm gonna be seeing what we have here. I guess I want to, are these in, well, they're not in the rainbow order. I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of, let's see, let's start with the reds. <clears throat> Excuse me. The redder tones, or what seems to be the redder tones. Um, cool. That's really cool looking. I probably should have left them alone. Let's see. We will. See how this works out. We'll paint it up like that. We'll start with red. We're going to sort of rainbow order. 
shake each tube, and I'll probably fast forward through this part. So as I began to pan, I did notice that the tubes all had about the same feel to them. They seemed to be full to about the same capacity. However, I'll have to say that many, many of these paints exploded on me. Now, I did shake each one of them before panning it um, in order to make sure that there was no binder paint separation or binder pigment separation, and there was in many of the tubes. Now, that very first red tube was extremely, extremely hard to get the top off of for some reason. The second tube exploded on me, which you guys were able to see even with the time lapse. Uh, the next couple of reds leading into the oranges had okay consistency to them. One of them was a little watery, but not too bad. Then I panned the black and the white and start moving into the earth tones backwards or going backwards to the front front and I had a couple of colors exploded as you can see I used a wet nap to kind of clean up I have some red on that wet nap some yellow on that red uh, wet nap had those exploding quite a bit um, the burnt sienna and the burnt umber looking colors did tend to explode then I moved back over to the gamboge and as you can see or what I'm calling gamboge more of the yellow that leans towards the sun. As you can see, it exploded all out of the back of the tube. Um, couldn't get any out of the actual neck of the tube. Had to clean that up and ended up putting that tube in a little Ziploc bag um, because I didn't want to get paint everywhere. Then I continued to pan and um, as I moved into the greens, I had a little trouble with some of those. As you can see, one of them is sitting off to the side there with the top off because I need to not only clean the neck where it exploded, I need to clean the extra paint out of the top itself, which I ended up washing a lot of paint out of a lot of those. Um, here I'm mixing the binder into the pigment with the blue because I had some separation with that. So overall, it was kind of a rough panning experience, I have to admit. Let's move on. Now, that, in all honesty, was probably one of the most unpleasant panning experience I've had um, with a tube paint since I began reviewing watercolors, in all honesty. Um, for what it's worth, the consistency varied from color to color. I mean, you, I, I wasn't really expecting the consistency to be exactly the same because I know, especially in professional watercolor paints, you'll have a difference in the consistency of the paint depending on the pigment and the formulation and that type of thing. So it wasn't so much that there was so much of a difference, but some of them were really watery and there is without a doubt or with no doubt binder separation was in a lot of them. And in a lot of them, I think I got more binder than I actually got pigment which I need to try to rectify if I can remember what color was which. I think this is this one. And hopefully I can get some more color out of here and not binder. There we go. Um, hopefully that's gonna help balance that a little bit. Make it a little thicker so that when it dry down it won't be all binder so i'm going to say at this point like i said not the most pleasant painting experience but i'm not going to let that um, depict the look of the quality of the paints as i test them so i need to give these time to dry down then i'll swatch them and we'll do all of the normal testing and things of that nature i want to start off this section of the video by apologizing for any lighting difference um, this video, the entire video, is going to be shot on different days and different intervals. So if there's any shifting in the light, lighting of the video, I do apologize um, ahead of time. Now, I started off after giving the paints time to dry, swatching them down with a pretty watery wash, trying my best to keep um, the consistency of water the same as I swatched them out. I had given them about two days to dry at this point, and for the most part, they were all pretty hard consistently across 
um, the color range. There were two, maybe three, that were still a little semi-moist, and those actually happened to be the ones that I had more of the binder issue where it seems like all I got was binder the first time when I squeezed the tube, and then eventually I got pigment, which I had to mix in with toothpicks. And that happened on two or three colors, um, other than some exploding tubes. <laughs> and so those three, two to three, seemed to be the ones that were still a bit moist, but I figure after a couple of more days, they'll go ahead and dry. Um, I do like the fact, and I will say before we even get to the review section, that um, I love the fact that there, I didn't experience any cracking, and I had quite a bit of pain in each of those pans. Um, colors were pretty opaque in a watery wash, to be honest. Um, there was not much shifting um, as the paints dried, and I did like that as well. The black line, I don't know if you guys can see it, and we'll look at it a little bit closer when we get to the review section. Um, even on this first layer, is has some pigment on it, has some coverage on it because this is definitely a hybrid paint. It's somewhere between a watercolor and a gouache. Um, the thinner the paint and the more water, you're going to get a more watercolor feel. You're going to get a more gouache effect. They remind me a lot of the Genze paints in that aspect. Uh, maybe even the Boku Undo because they give you the same sort of feel. Now, here I switched over from a uh, round synthetic squirrel to a flat um, synthetic golden teclon. That way I was able to grab more pigment from the pan in order to do the glazing layer. Um, and here you're really able to see just how saturated these paints can possibly get and just how much coverage they can possibly offer you. Now I'm a huge Paul Rubens fan, um, but I did go into this entire video, the entire testing and reviewing of these paints with an open mind understanding that just because um, i like most things from a manufacturer or from a company or a brand doesn't mean i'm going to like everything so i'm really taking my time to test and make notes of these paints uh they they are saturated i, I have to say that i love that blue the blue range the blues are really pretty to me um, and um, the gold, I'm really excited about that as well. It was really shimmery and pretty, and I figure it's going to work well um, in many compositions, adding a little bit of um, pizzazz, so to speak. Now, the earth tones, the colors that I would call like maybe burnt umber and burnt sienna, because there were no color names, or maybe there are color names, but everything is in Chinese. And at this point, I hadn't taken the time to try to um, do any translating. So I'm going to finish up the glazing and then we are probably going to move on into a demo. Thank you. 
with the review section of this video let's jump right in we're going to keep it short and to the point because i know you guys are probably ready to go at this point so if you remember we had the paint set come in this really beautiful box i love the artwork on it and um, i really want to give these paints um, a try on like rice paper i um and some more traditional Chinese style papers. I did get some recently as part of a, um, some Happy Meals, so I might give that a try soon. I remember we had the beautiful box here. Um, we won't go through an unboxing again. The inside of the box had this little pamphlet that gave you this these beautiful images of the watercolors although this is digitized because these paints i'm going to go ahead and tell you they do dry matte they do not have like um a gloss finish to them or any type of a shine they do have a really matte feel to them when they dry down um on your papers which is a little bit different from other traditional style chinese watercolors like say your ganza style paints which typically have a little bit more of a shine to them now, I will be missing a tool here, which I will grab, if you remember from the unboxing. That is the tube that really exploded on me the worst, all out of the bag, so I did put it in the bag. Had the beautiful tubes, all of the information that's on the tubes is in Chinese. Now, since the unboxing, I did take time to use a translator. Um, basically, it gives you the volume of your amount, um, the light fast ratings which all of them here have five stars but the translator would break that down into two to three stars which i'm not sure how reliable it actually was um and then the top tells you the vehicle um the binder that carries the paint uh, i did not have the best unpanning situation with these paints unfortunately uh, i really do wish that the consistency of the paints overall was a little bit better now if you remember i did pan all of them to let them dry down excuse the dirty palette but i was recently painting with the paints um there was not a lot of cracking there was some cracking in the two that had the worst of the binder separation issues the one that was the really hard one for me to get out of the two the more um, golden lean and yellow and then um, there was also this the blue um, that um it was just mostly binder and I had to drop paint in and mix it in with the toothpick if you remember so but other than those two none of the rest of the paints cracked which I think is really great because the pigments in this paint are ground to be a little bit more coarse than your traditional style watercolors um, and because it's more like a gouache in that way, I was expecting it to crack, but I was really thoroughly surprised to see that it didn't. I was really pleasantly surprised. I'm sorry to see that it didn't. So overall, although the unpanning itself wasn't necessarily the best situation, the actual dry down of the paints was great. 
they re-wet really well. I didn't have an issue with that. Um, I did not pre-activate the palette in any of the paintings that I did. And I was still able to get um, the paint going right away with a very light touch of the brush, which I thought was another great thing considering I thought it was gonna be more like a gouache. All right, so let me put this up really quickly and then we are gonna switch over to looking at some swatches. Let's see, what did I do with that pamphlet? Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. You guys have to forgive me why I move, or try to move hasty, hastily to put this up. All oh, right, so we swatched in, we did some color mixing. Now, my swatches are not gonna have any information on them because I could, I don't have any information to offer. So, although I do know that they come from a professional line and brand, that brand does happen to produce student grade as well. So, um, I would think these are professional or in my opinion, based on the performance and the quality, I would say that these are uh, more of a professional grade of paint, uh, but I will reiterate that they have a really matte finish to them not even a soft finish but matte um giving you more of a gouache feel although they handle like ganze types uh ganze style paints um i really like that now there aren't any there are no there is no flow there's no flow don't expect that the pigments sit on the paper you're going to have to coerce and move the pigments into the position that you want them to go However, there's a nice range of colors. They are pretty. Um, they layer and glaze really well. The more you glaze, the more you layer, the more opacity you're going to build. Um, the more you water them down, the more of an opaque watercolor um, feel that you're going to get. Let me be specific about that because I don't want to say watercolor feel. These do not remind me of your traditional style um, watercolor or western watercolor that you would expect it to like this is not going to be like your marie's masters this is not going to be like your um core this is not going to be like your daniel smith you know these paints are much more in the style of your um Genze, your kiritake Genze, um your uh what is it kurosabe i think that's the name of it sit those paints that are um, more made for papers that are not as sized as the ones that we normally paint on. However, that did not take away from the fact that I think that this was a pretty decent set of paints. The colors mixed really well and cleanly, although the pigments in this paint are heavier, so you have to be careful because you can get to making mud much quicker than you would with a normal style watercolor. Although they will mix and blend well, as you can see, they are gonna dry down with a matte finish. I think it does, I'm not gonna say it dulls them down, but in my opinion, they lose a little bit of the luster. It still doesn't take away from the fact that you're able to produce a really pretty painting. Now, I like the fact that the set had like this gold, and although it looks gold once it dries down, when you mix it into other colors, it's more iridescent, it doesn't, change the original mass tone much it does now and it's going to add more opacity to it uh, but it doesn't just completely change the tone so that it's unrecognizable and i really like that now i wasn't sure of any of the names but i did from the set pull the most primary and I was able to mix a uh, pretty beautiful purple. That red that I'm using is more of your uh, magenta leaning red, more of an, a crimson um, tone. Uh, I was able to mix the yellow, which was more like a brilliant yellow, lemon yellow with the ultramarine, somewhere in between ultramarine and Prussian. I'm gonna say it's an ultramarine. Um, we got an, an okay orange but that red wasn't the best to mix that orange with and then of course i got a really vibrant and beautiful green down here from mixing the blue and the yellow now um the set doesn't have what i would consider a sap green per se so i took the green that was the closest and mixed some yellow into it and it gave me a pretty decent yellow green um 
which I thought would be really nice for the highlights on foliage. Uh, here, I did test the paints out with salt. Now, because the pigments in this paint is heavy, heavier than like a normal watercolor, um, they did not react to salt uh, as much as another, uh, maybe another brand would, but they reacted enough. So I'm just gonna do a lift test. Do I have a napkin? Because you guys know I always do one and never do. So I found one really quickly. Let's go ahead and see about lifting those paints there. And that is that Royal and Lane Nickel Menta number eight scrubber brush. It is my favorite one. I use it all the time. And, and you know, as you can see, they are definitely semi-staining. <clears throat> but you can get back some of the white of the paper. So overall, pretty decent set. I mixed a different orange here because I really didn't like the way that magenta red. So I went back and grabbed more of your true red color and mixed it with um, the lemon yellow, that's what I'm calling it. Gave me a much brighter orange, even brighter than the one that's actually included in the set. So I think they're a nice set of paints. Uh, artwork really quickly here. Candy Cane was the first thing did as a Christmas composition. All of them are going to be Christmas compositions and they all have bows, I'm going to tell you now, because I have this little theme going for the Christmas paintings that I'm doing for a project I have coming up to launch at the beginning of next year um, that'll conclude at the end of this year. So that's why you're going to see so many bows, just know that. First was the Candy Cane with the green bow. I use this in combination with some or watercolor pencils, if I'm not mistaken. It was the Suzanne. I will link all of these videos so that you can go check them out if you would like to. Really love the paints on that paper. That is that Master's Touch Ready Cut watercolor card. I think it works really well on cellulose paper. Um, I, I really did. Here, I believe I used it on 100% cotton. This is the Artwell 100% cotton watercolor paper. Now on both papers, the paints worked well, blended well. I think I got better lifting on the cellulose paper. Um, and I feel like I was able to build more saturation and color on the cellulose paper than I was on the 100% cotton paper with this paint. And I think that's different considering that it's the reverse for most other watercolor sets that I use. And I'm really not even sure if I would classify this as watercolor, if the truth be told. I think it's more of a hybrid paint. Um, you're able to paint with it as a watercolor, as a gouache, um, but I really truly think it's a, a whole nother beast in itself. Um, I also painted in this particular video, what was it? This? I sure hope this is what I painted, considering that's what I'm showing. Um, <clears throat> the globe, I enjoyed it, had fun. Used the Master's Touch um, fine liners in combination with doing this one. Just wanted to see if I can get a different effect, different feel with this bow. And it kind of gave me a, a kind of a Christmas trio color of bows here. So, eh, you know, I got a thing going on. But I really enjoyed using the paints, guys. Um, I do think that they are, are worth the $46.99 I paid for them. However, I do not necessarily know if they would be the first paints I would recommend to someone, especially someone just starting out in watercolors. I think um, they are a different beast to handle and paint with. And again, they are gonna dry down matte. Um, so I think gouache users would really like these paints. I do. Um, that's just my opinion though. I love gouache as you guys know. Um, and I really think that they would really enjoy, anybody who enjoys painting with a more opaque medium gouache, acrylic maybe, even oils maybe. I think this might be a watercolor that maybe would tickle your fancy. So there you have my two cents on all of this. 
On a scale of one to five, I would give the Paul Rubens Guaca tube set um, a rating of three thrifty stars, simply because I think that along the professional line of paints, they are a really cool introduction to a gouache style paint. I would call it more of a novelty paint in my, in, in my opinion, um, because it's not quite a gouache, it's not quite a watercolor. This, these are just based on based on my use, but I think the paints are really nice. I think you can achieve some really nice effects with them um, and that you can paint out some really beautiful paintings. So don't be discouraged by them. Um, if you want to try something new, you want to try something different. Um, maybe you're a gouache fan and you want something a little bit different to try or maybe if you haven't tried gouache and you you want to kind of give something to try that's going to be a little bit more to the watercolor style then you might want to give these a try so there you go I think it's something out there for everybody guys um, hopefully you found something in this video helpful um, if you did please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up go ahead and share this video sharing is caring hit the comment section up let me know have you used these paints what did you think of the review was it helpful um did uh, it's gonna hopefully the information helps you make a decision about whether you want to add these to your art supply collection um guys go ahead and subscribe please and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when new content come out you check the video description for all of the relevant links videos on artwork etsy patreon facebook instagram most recommended product list and remember as i tell you at the end of every video just keep painting and crafting